Well, to uh, help us understand and uh, make sense of uh, the things that uh, complicate the current political climate and the best way out uh, of this nightmare, we are joined by Leopoldo Martinez, who's a former congressman in Venezuela, now based in the United States. He's the founder of the Center for Democracy and Development in the Americas and a member of the Democratic National Committee. He joins us now via Skype from Washington. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, a very good evening from us here. I think it's late afternoon for you. It is late afternoon mm -hmm. for us here. Thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to talk about this complex issue that is so important to me as well as a, for, as a former Venezuelan political yeah. leader uh, now in the United States All and right. uh, an advocate for democracy in Venezuela. All right, so we've got quite a bit to unpack, but I want to start uh, with this um, the International Monetary Fund uh, rejecting Venezuela's uh, $5 billion uh, coronavirus response loan. And I'm just wondering if this isn't a bid to try and convince uh, Mr. Maduro to uh, uh, step aside. And we know that America uh, is among 50 countries that have recognized his uh, rival, um, Mr. Guaido, as the de facto leader of the country. Do you think this is, this is not a surprise then that the IMF would have refused to advance this money? Well, we're, what we're seeing in Venezuela is a, a stalemate. It's a situation where uh, Nicolás Maduro is holding to power without legitimacy because the last presidential election that was held in Venezuela was not recognized by the opposition and the international community. And then Juan Guaido, as president of the National Assembly, which is the last uh, organization of our, our public powers that was elected in a duly credible election in 2015, according to a reading of the Constitution, he stepped in as mm -hmm. interim president because uh, of Maduro's uh, uh, Ill illegitimacy. So since that day, that's almost a year and a half ago, uh, these two contending powers had not resolved the conflict. And the international community, including the IMF, uh, has no uh, uh, possibility of uh, dispersing funds and engaging in any way with the Venezuelan uh, government, mm. with the nation, until this is resolved. There are members of the International Monetary Fund who do recognize Juan Guaido as the legitimate president. There are other members of the International Monetary Fund mm. that do not. The sad part of this is that Venezuela is undergoing a horrendous humanitarian crisis. The economy, it's collapsed. The healthcare system is collapsed. Five million Venezuelans had fled the country to Colombia and other countries in Latin America. Some of them had gone to Spain or the United States. There are Venezuelans everywhere in the world seeking refuge from the humanitarian crisis or the political oppression of the Nicolás Maduro regime. And uh, one could only expect that given this pandemic that only creates a more complicated scenario mm -hmm. to the one we have, there could be some way to uh, provide understanding and common ground among the two political uh, fractions in contention to at least facilitate engagement with the international community to resolve the pandemic and the humanitarian crisis while other agreements are, are, are sought in order to find an electoral and pacific path to resolve the Venezuelan conflict. Mm -hmm. What Venezuela needs is a credible election where all members uh, of Congress, the president, governors, mayors, are elected actually by the Venezuelan people. And, uh, and uh, also you will require some agreements between the two parties in contention as to how to transition from right. the situation in which Venezuela is today to a situation where we could see a, a reactivation of the economy and addressing with international support the important 
social issues that have accumulated over time under the Maduro regime, given the collapse of the economy and of the government itself. All right. So um, I was busy trying to get my head around uh, the situation in Venezuela, and it, it seems very complicated. I mean, uh, Mr. Maduro has done as much as he can to, to, to hold on to power. And I suppose part of um, his uh, resolve and his strength comes from the support from the army. And I wonder if also... Uh, foreign powers might be helping him. I saw that a, um, a sanctions uh, um, that were being pushed through by the United States, China and Russia came to the aid of uh, Maduro. Uh, so there's internal politics, but it seems as if perhaps there are external politics at, at play as well. Yes, Be Venezuela, Venezuela is a very... Uh, rich country in terms of natural resources. Uh, it's a country with important reserves of oil, but also with other minerals that are important for the international markets. It has an incredible potential for many economic activities, and it has a very strategic location in South America. So the lack of engagement of the United States uh, because of sanctions, and a hardline diplomacy that the Trump administration has put forward as a as a as, as a strategy to to um, bring change in Venezuela has created an opportunity for Russia, China, and others to step in and uh, seize the opportunity that the country represents in terms of natural resources, and that will complicate. The game. It will complicate the situation because then the conflict will not only be calling for bold agreements between the opposition coalition and whomever in the regime do want to see democracy mm. as an alternative back in Venezuela, uh, but it will also bring all this geopolitical interest into the negotiation. Uh, and bring complexity to the problem. You are right when you say that Maduro remains in power mostly and fundamentally because he has the strong support of the military. And uh, although there are people in the military, officers, that are not necessarily um, in agreement with the general policies and the oppression of the Maduro regime, the, the larger component of the military seems to be for different reasons backing him. It's mm. one uh, important reason that we have to take into account the, existent, uh, the existence of significant amount of illegal activity and organized crime in Venezuela around drug trafficking and other forms of trafficking that are somehow involving members of the military. That's one part of this problem. The other is that many who are still supporting Maduro or reluctantly supporting Maduro do not see a path for amnesty, reconciliation mm -hmm. or the, under the current scheme of affairs. And, and they retreat with Maduro in lack of an opportunity to yeah. engage the opposition and the international community in a way that is productive and conducive to elections and democracy. So we have to add the factor of Donald Trump. Donald Trump uh, has, a, has a, a bravado against Venezuela, but he actually has no strategy. Yeah. And he has said that all options are on the table and also under the table. And that has empowered uh, initiatives that nobody is clear where they're coming from and, and why uh, they are taking place, uh, like the ones we saw last week with this um, nonsense attempt yeah. of use of, uh, of force through mercenaries that has not only created the impression that the whole operation was infiltrated by the Maduro regime, mm -hmm. but that also there were elements of the Guaido coalition that were looking at this option 
as, a, as an alternative within the framework of the Trump administration rhetoric of all the options are on the table and under the table. Oh. So this rhetoric of Donald Trump has uh, pushed back and pushed out greater international cooperation to find solutions through dialogue, meaningful dialogue and negotiations that can open a credible international supervised election and to a transitional process that will bring democracy back yeah. into Venezuela. All right. So, you know, um, you can't talk about Venezuela without talking about Hugo Chavez. And I just wonder how much of a shadow he still has on current Venezuela. He came into power with this uh, uh, Bolivarian uh, revolution to try and fix um, um, inequality, almost uh, uh, kind of Fidel Castro-like socialist and made friends with Russia. And I just wonder if a lot of his influence is still casting a shadow over the current uh, turmoil that Venezuela finds itself in? Yeah, no, no doubt that the image and the message of Hugo Chavez continues to play a role in Venezuelan politics. When I said that Maduro was held in power by the military, is because Chavez doctrine also involved the military in politics. And for many reasons, he basically crafted a new system in our military that was at the service of the revolution. So not only organized crime, like I like like mentioned, or corruption plays a role here, there is an ideological component out there which has to do with the involvement of the military in political affairs. In fact, the official party that is headed by Nicolás Maduro today is mostly integrated by active members of the military in a way that blends the military institution with the official party, uh, creating a, 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 a unique system uh, where you have many generals and many high rankings of, uh, officers of the military in exercise of uh, functions of government that otherwise would not be uh, in their hands. So that creates an incentive for the military to be part of this process with Maduro, uh, and it has to do with Hugo Chavez. But also, Maduro continues to hold to, re the, to the residual popular support of Chavez. Chavez remains a figure that is contemplated by many Venezuelans as a popular figure, uh, in spite of all the collapse of the economy and the situation in which Venezuela is situated today, they don't blame Maduro, they don't blame Chavez, they blame Maduro. Many people who supported Chavez say Maduro was the success of Chavez, but he never was up to the task. And that, what, that has created uh, a, a, a mass of people who are not in support of the opposition, and are not in support of Maduro. And, and, and Maduro holds to the residual of what was the official party created by Hugo Chavez. Mm -hmm. uh, Maduro's support in the polls today, it's probably close to 15 to 20% wow. of the national uh, popular vote, with 80% or more of Venezuelans in disagreement with his government uh, absolutely in protest, uh, uh, waiting for change, expecting change. Now, the form of change, the content of change, the policies that will characterize that change are pretty much in dispute, not only in between those who sympathize in the past with Hugo Chavez, but among the many fractions that integrate the opposition coalition, which is not a monolith is also a coalition of many factors in the political spectrum that move from the left to the center right. So the complexity of that adds to the complexity yeah. of the political situation that leverages the possibility of Maduro staying in power 
by dividing and conquering. And, and that's exactly what, is he's what he's trying to do now, divide and conquer. And, and, and he has been, unfortunately for Venezuela, successful so far yeah. in dividing and conquering and holding power with the support of the military. I wish we could talk longer, but unfortunately we've run out of time. But uh, I think this is a conversation we certainly can pick up again. Thank you so much for your insights uh, this evening there. Thank you so much. I, at your service, anytime, okay?